Welcome to the Crownsman Show. I'm your host, Jared Downey. Uh, very excited to have our guests on the show today. We have three guests from The Bucket Shop. This is going to be a part two. The Bucket Shop is an exclusive distributor for RhinoWare, so they're going to be talking a lot about that. We're joined by their president, Paul Woodward, Tim McKinnon, and Jameson Powell. So uh, Paul Woodward is vice president, Tim is technical sales, and Jameson is business optimization. So nice three different streams. Um, even if you're not in where parts, you're also going to be learning a lot about business operations and their, their business model. Lots to cover today. It's going to be very exciting. Before we do that, I'm going to hand it over to Gowdy for our sponsors. Alrighty, so today we've got Fuller Brothers. Fuller Brothers Inc. has over 59 years of tire industry experience as the world's leader in providing non-hazardous, non-toxic products that reduce tire management costs for a diverse range of customers. The acknowledged formula developers of the globally recognized Tire Life. Fuller Brothers also produces other quality products such as PSF Plus, PSF, LubeZit, Tire Cream, Dripless Tire Paint, Omega Tire Repair System, as well as select tire service tools and tire painting equipment. For more information, you can visit them at fullerbros.com or you can call toll free at 1-800-547-7785. Alrighty, so next up, we also have Savannah Equipment. Did you know that Savannah Equipment is an electrical supplier in both Canada and the United States? Their electrical inventory includes breakers, disconnects, TEFC electric motors, starters, tech cable, cab tire, motor control centers, and transformers. For your new and refurbished electrical equipment, visit SavannahEquipment.com, where you will find more equipment every day. We also have Fenner Dunlop. Monitoring the health of your steel cord to conveyor belts has never been easier. Powered by Eagle Eye, Fenner Dunlop's bird's eye identifies potential belt issues before they have the opportunity to create the need for larger, more time intensive and expensive action. Log in from your smartphone, tablet or computer to access all your steel cord belts from one screen. Your bird's eye subscription also includes online remote service and call center support. On-demand web reports and yearly review of your system's performance. Visit FenderDunlopAmericas.com for more information. And last but not least, we've got PowerZone. When you need a specialized team of world-class engineers for your oil and gas pipelines, dewatering, or any fluid handling needs, you want to visit PowerZone.com. In addition to their inventory of rebuilt pumps, motors, engines, they also have an amazing team to design and engineer your systems, no matter the challenge, no matter the location. Get in the zone with PowerZone. Visit them at PowerZone.com. Com. Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Good to have you on. Glad to be back. Thank you for having us, Jared. Yeah, Paul, you again. Paul and Jamie, you're a part two. Tim, uh, first time on the show. How you feeling? Glad to, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. It's going to be good to have you on. Uh, lots to cover today. Um, in these part twos, you know, we've done the intro to the company. People sort of know a little bit about you. Uh, they can check out that original. But I want to just jump. So I want to kind of jump right in, Jamie. Start with you. Um, just give us a quite quick sort of background on the bucket shop when it comes to wear parts and then that transition um, into bringing on Rhino wear and, and sort of that, that backstory for us. Certainly. Well, thank you, Jared. It's great to be back. So to, to set the stage, you know, Rhino wear is the outcome of the bucket shops experience in wear products and dating back to 2015, Paul's initiative was to launch our first version of TBS cast products. We developed our own cast lip solution and cast heel shrouds. And since 2015, it's gone through eight iterations and significant testing in the hard rock conditions of Northern Ontario. And really what that did is it set the stage to move that intellectual property to a larger entity, specifically RhinoWare. We broaden the portfolio within RhinoWare, and we've now been appointed as the uh, exclusive distributor for all of their wear products, which uh, I think Tim will get into the specifics of what they are. Um, Tim, I think I'll pass it over to you here. Um, again, welcome to the show. It's good, good to have you on and be a part of the, the part two shows are always fun for us. Um, can you just give us a, a little bit of a list of, of what RhinoWare is, is offering in the product line? For sure, Jared. Uh, there's basically five components to RhinoWare. Uh, the first being our cast lip and heels, which, was, as Jamie mentioned, is our first uh, attempt and uh, where we started our relationship with the foundries. Uh, secondly, there's the uh, chrome white iron. A lot of people call it CWI. Uh, thirdly, it's the um, chromium carbide overlay plate, uh, also called CCO. 
And then we've got the uh, polymers and the compounds, uh, which uh, are widely used in the industry. And then lastly is the uh, engineered uh, lifting lugs. Okay, so it's a complete product line. And then I, I wanted to kind of, Jamie, I want to set out um, to kind of understand the context of the of taking on RhinoWare and sort of that, that, you know, the bucket shop products versus RhinoWare products, sort of how that all matches up and just get some context for it. Sure, it was really an evolution. So the, the product portfolio that we see in RhinoWare today uh, was, was born out of firstly what the bucket shop did to engineer the metallurgy and the design of our own cast products. We had been in the business of wear parts for many, many years and resold other people's chrome white iron or other people's chromium carbide overlay. Uh, with the success that we had in the Northern Ontario mining sector, we clearly brought uh, some engineering expertise to the table. We had trial results that proved that our metallurgy could withstand the hardest rock conditions. And, and we had documentation to prove that when we made a claim, we honored that claim. So we knew what we, were, we were already competing very, very well for price and performance. So it made sense if we were gonna grow our presence globally, that we move that intellectual property to an entity that could really represent a larger portfolio beyond what we could, but we still have direct insight over the engineering requirements, the metallurgy requirements, or the chemical compounds that go into those products. So we're really tied as a close partner through RhinoWare and right back as Tim stated, right to the foundries that uh, we can modify requirements as, as needed. Paul, I wanna, I wanna bring you in. I don't wanna leave you out of the interview. Uh, so I, I wanna bring you in um, to talk about the goal of this show because we're gonna cover some product. We're gonna sort of break down some of the products, give examples, um, talk about even the composition of the materials. You know, we're gonna cover a lot, but um, I, I think it's really important for the audience to understand what the bucket shop's goal is of being on this show talking about RhinoWare and what you're actually looking for in the market. Fair. Well, thank you, Jared. And and really we've we we think the Crownsman show is a great platform to introduce, you know, the industry to what it is that we're doing, the successes that we had and that we're having. Um, and and really the goal here today is to reach out to extend that reach and and uh, create a dealer network. So yes, we're looking for distributors to uh, to uh, to distribute our products. We're looking for distributors that might be like us. You know, we happen to be our own best customer because we're a bucket shop. Uh, but uh, ideally, we're looking to extend that reach. Uh, we talk about global. Uh, it is a global market that we're pursuing. We need right. to shop on a global market in order to be competitive within that global market. And uh, you know, so ideally, we're we're looking to uh, to extend that reach, and it's the dealer network that we're looking to create that interest and bring the people in and have these other people enjoy the successes that that we've enjoyed here in Timmins. If you're with you being the bucket shop um, for a dealer, that must do you do you feel like for for potential distributors um, for you to work with them, does that sort of give them a certain amount of confidence that that you can? That not only do you know the product, but you know how to communicate the, the product's advantages and everything like that. Is it just, it's, it must just provide a whole layer of support uh, when you're talking to potential partners. Well, absolutely. And, and, and being in the front lines and having gone through all of the revisions that we've gone through, we understand where to put the product. We understand where not to put the product. We have CCO. We've got the chromium carbide overlay plate as well as the chrome white iron. And although in similar hardnesses, um, they each have their in, uh, their locations where they'll work best and, and, and in some cases not so well. So it's important that we understand those uh, those installations and those applications and we can help guide the dealer network into where to properly place these materials to ensure their success. Uh, Tim, I actually, um, you know, the chrome white iron, and those are all, all honestly, there a lot of them are new terms to me. Um, can you, we talk a little bit about the RhinoWare co competitive advantage that, you know, uh, just even the composition, I mean, I don't, I don't know, we don't need to get into <laughs> a full, a full chemical breakdown, but just sort of why, why the product is able to be so competitive in the market and, and outperform obviously a lot of, a lot of the competitors. Yeah, for sure, Jared. Uh, for those that may not know, I'll just give a brief, uh, a brief overview. Basically, chrome white iron. It, the three main elements of that are uh, chromium, um, mag manganese, molybdenum, and and, uh, and copper is also there in some uh, some quantity. Um, 
with this unique alloy, the uh, Brunel hardness, uh, you were able to achieve over four, uh, 700 Brunel, I'm sorry. Um, every uh, every uh, casting is bonded to a mild steel backer plate, which uh, offers great uh, weldability to any substrate, uh, any parent metal. So it's, it's, it's a really unique product uh, for that. It's, it's uh, great for medium impact, uh, in high abrasion. And uh, in fact, uh, compared to traditional AR plate, um, your chromium white iron, uh, say against a, a 400, you can get uh, up to 10 times the life, which is, is spectacular. And uh, say against 500, you can get up to 600, six times life. So it's, uh, it's really an amazing product. So it's not even, it's in, in some, against some product lines, it's not even comparable. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly. Like like everything, it's it, everything's got its right application, and I think that's right. where the bucket shop uh, and uh, our experience excels in knowing each application and in putting the right product in the right application. Well, Jamie, I was going to ask you. You said about you're your own best customer, and you kind of touched on how much feedback do you have going back and forth to say what like like product development at RhinoWare? Do you also have input into that to sort of to, to give them an edge in the production as well? How, how does that sort of back and forth work? Well, very much so. So not only for our feedback from us as the customer installing chrome white iron, for instance, on our own cast lips and heels, but we would take, uh, I'll give you a, an actual example in the field, um, using large haul trucks, uh, we would create liner packages in, in the back of these large dump trucks. And one unique scenario that these liner packages where we have customized them, you can appreciate a large haul truck would have a zone in the middle that's a high impact zone where the shovel dumps up to 100 tons of rock at one time. And then as the truck dumps, there's an abrasion zone out the back. So that differentiation of those protective liners is something that we would have a lot of input on the design. And we would ask our clients to give us feedback. And Tim, as an example, he's been on site multiple times to audit the results. If we made a claim that our cast slip can last a certain number of hours, Right. Tim's one of the people out on site measuring the hours and measuring the wear. So we see it ourselves internally. We get the feedback from our customers. And then we have the luxury to change the metal composition or metallurgical composition if required. Our testing ground here literally is the hardest rock conditions in the world. So we know that if we can make something last a long time here, uh, it will last at least as long throughout the rest of the world. Um, and then and then it goes into now. now <sighs> With a product like this, if you're something that's lasting 10 times, if you come to a customer and something that's lasting 10 times longer, now, now you're still, because this is, this is, is this as much specialty or what kind of category would you put the RhinoWare line in um, as a, because this is something that they're just going to have to keep on using, right? So it's got, obviously price has to be a competitive, is, is a factor as well. So how do you sort of find that all that balances out? Uh, if, if that's up to me to take that question so that, Generally speaking, so the, these are consumable. They're, they're considered a commoditized product. Okay. However, there, there's two important criteria that get measured in any commoditized product. It's the price, the initial price that you pay, and it's the overall performance. And when you balance those two, because we have a direct to foundry pricing model, we know that we're extremely price competitive. Mm. And because we can modify the metallurgy or the chemicals, we know that we're extremely performance competitive. Uh, when you bundle those two together for a total value, uh, and then state our claims and, and we prove ourselves in the hard rock conditions. So that's the value statement that we brought that it's, it's been an extremely successful model across all elements of what Rhino wears. is. And if I could just qu yeah, quickly, please. just, just understanding that ore density varies between one property to the other, not always will those wear characteristics be the same. Um, yeah, we've right. got properties just uh, here in Timmins where they might get 4,000 hours on a lip and an hour and a half to the south, it's an hour, it, it's, uh, um, it, it might only be 1,000 hours on a lip versus four. So we do see some significant changes in the ground conditions uh, within a stone's throw away. Uh, what's also unique is, is while it might be a commoditized product, if we put in that commoditized product at a customer's location and it requires alteration over and above the metallurgical composition, 
then we can go back to the design board and we go back to engineering and we customize that part. We can go from a, a, a customized paper napkin sketch to a solid works drawing to a firm price proposal in front of the customer in less than 72 hours. And I, oh. I think that that's a pretty respectable turnaround on something that might be just from concept to, to paper to quote. And in less than 90 days, we have product on the ground. So it's, it's quite a unique uh, uh, infrastructure we have to work with. Well, Paul, I, I should, I should, that kind of begs the question, um, who are the good partners then for you? What would be sort of if a distributor, you know, we're, we're out in BC, you're back in Ontario. If someone's picking up the phone to, to, uh, to talk to you about it, what sort of is some of the criteria you're looking for? Do they do you need to have some ability to be able to adapt the products and things like that? Well, not necessarily. I mean, and that's our job is to receive that feedback from the dealer network and then provide the solutions and the support for the dealer network to be uh, successful in their own individual trading areas. Anybody that is experiencing any ground, uh, any ground engaging where they've got wear, uh, doesn't even necessarily need to be, uh, you know, in the ground. It could be in conveyance, for example, skirt liners, transfer points. Um, there's just a whole number of areas within the ore processing circuit where these products can be placed. So it's not strictly just buckets and heels right. and, you know, gluing this stuff on. Um, this stuff is routinely used within, uh, uh, within mill shutdowns, uh, emergency repairs, um, you know, the stuff that's done on the fly, both the chromium carbide, um, the chrome white iron and the polymers, which we'll get to, all serve a very integral role in helping keep the mine up um, in some of the most abrasive applications where they've got centralized wear, these are the products that go in there to put out those fires and get the mine back up and running and when they can have more time to actually take the unit down and perform a sectional repair of more significance. And um, I, I think that's key too, yeah. is, is the downtime, like Paul talked about, um, you know, the, the, the value uh, of this product is, is not only in, in the extended life, but in the background, you've got uh, safety concerns for guys going into confined spaces. So the less times that you have to go into that confined space, uh, the, the, uh, the cost of production downtime in some of these big mining right. operations is huge. So, huge. you know, uh, the small premium that you might pay for a, a premium product like this is, is outweighed by, by your production benefits. Well, I was going to ask um, if, Tim, Paul, Jamie. I don't know who would answer this question, but you, well, Paul, you said about that uh, in one area it might be four thousand hours, and the next area it might be a thousand hours. Now, if it's a competitor who is using a different composition, and it will that mean that it will be two thousand hours, and the other one will be a thousand hours, or or a hundred hours? Like, is it? Does it? Um, Will their product will be will also be dependent on the the area as well? It's not as if your composition all of a sudden might not be the right, like won't last as long as the other as the other, right? Is right. I'm sort of confusing the question. We, we we've certainly nailed down the competition, and that's a large part of the revisions that we've been through. Um, it's always a compromise to try to find the ultimate hardness but maintain well weldability. Yeah. And if you go too hard, you lose the weldability. So we've worked very hard uh, with, with the, the, uh, the chemistry to find that happy medium, and we found it now. So we don't have heat-affected zone cracking, which some of our competitors have regularly. And that's made us, uh, that's certainly brought some value add to our, to our offerings. It really comes down to chemistry and profile. And I think we've nailed the, the two of those down. Time at the face is everything when we're talking about bucket lifts and uptime. So these are measurable results. Um, and where the companies don't have the, those measurable uh, results or they don't have those systems in place, well, then that's where the audit process really kicks in that we offer to, to help them along and understanding that, yes, there is a return on this investment. And yes, those premiums that you're paying for this product are worth it. It really comes down to uh, total, co total cost of ownership. Um, I think we got we got to break down we got to break down a few of the products because uh, we kind of touched on them but uh, I don't want to get too far in before we actually uh, unpack a couple. So Paul, I'm going to stay with you. I want to talk about the um, I think we're going to go with the the cast the cast lips and the heels again. I'm just saying you see I'm reading it off. I'm not an expert on the topic, sure <laughs> so thing. I'm going to hand it over to you to sort of break them down as a product line. Appreciate it. That's really where our roots are or were when we first started off. We've been using cast lips and the industry has been using cast lips for well over 30 years. It is not new technology by any means. 
Um, the, the cast lip versus plate lip does offer uh, longevity. Um, and uh, that's really where we placed a lot of our marbles in the beginning. And so how are we going to go to market and, and differentiate ourselves in, a, in an area of business that's been active and working for 30 years? And nobody's really had any major complaints about the performance of that system, but nobody's right. done anything to make it better. So um, RhinoWare took it upon themselves to, to embrace the idea of getting outside the box and doing something completely different that the industry's not done. And so we're pretty proud of, you know, the results that we've been able to obtain. We've differentiated ourselves in the market. And what we've done to, to make that happen is we've embedded some of the RhinoWare chrome white iron, and we've put it into the bottom side of the high wear services of both the cast lips and the heels. And in doing so, we've been able to extend the life cycles up to five times. Um, and those results are, are, uh, are prevalent throughout our trading area. And so as we reach out to dealers, the hardest sell is always the first sell. After that, the yeah. product tends yeah. to sell itself so long as the customer is, is, uh, uh, has some measurable results in some kind of um, a base to work from. Right. You know, um, but uh, the, the, the cast lip and the heels have been the, the focus point of the development of the RhinoWare line. And it's worked very, very well. It's the chemistry. It's the profile uh, composition. And then you take all of those things and you add the chrome white iron that is embedded into there. Um, we've increased those life cycles substantially. So historically, in order to maintain a weldability on a cast lip, you would not want to push the threshold of anything any greater than about 400 to 450 Brunel. After that, we start to have cracking heat affected problems uh, or zones. Um, and so we've been able to keep the hardness down and we've put the 700 Brunel product at the bottom where the lips need it most. Mm -hmm. So we focused on the highest wear areas and the centralized wear patterns within each of these areas in which we, we focus, uh, putting the meat where it matters, if you will. And it's made all the difference. Uh, Jamie, I, I think we need to touch on it as well, because one of these pictures, I got a note on one of the pictures I saw that it had actually been, um, it was part of your welding program that you've, um, that you've launched at the bucket shop as well. I want to throw it over to you to quickly, you know, we're going to talk about the other product lines and that, but I want to just talk a little bit about that program, the bucket shop, because I think, I think it's really neat what you've done over there. Oh, with pride, uh, the timing is impeccable. We're literally wrapping up our second year of our Aboriginal women's uh, welding training program where we take uh, women throughout Northern Ontario, uh, put them through a crash course in welding in our own environment. And we bring in the Canadian Welding Bureau to apply practical tests and certify these ladies of which 100% of them have gone through the program and attained at least one welding ticket. Uh, really proud that three of the best performers over the last two years are still with us in full-time employment. And the remaining of the 44 plus women that have gone through the program, uh, we've reached out to our mining sector partners and helped keep them employed in, in various capacities. So it's uh, our small part to help the labor challenges that we're all experiencing. And um, I'll foreshadow that the program is about to get much bigger, much better, and will encompass uh, women, men, and youth, um, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal alike. So, we're really proud of the success and it's gotten a lot of uh, recognition from our, our mining partners and our political partners as well. You know, I just, I have to say as a company, I know, and I've, I've gotten to know it fairly well, is just your, the, your, as a company, your ability to find all these different streams that are important for what, what should make up a company is, you know, um, and you're not, you know, it's not a, you're not a publicly traded company where, you know, you're, you're having to file reports and do all this sort of stuff and you're, you're doing it um, to be a good company. And I just, it, it just, I have a lot of respect for, it and I think a lot of people do. So, uh, so thank you. Um, the, just jumping back in, Paul, um, the, I also want to talk about the, uh, the heel strouds because we, again, we kind of touched on the last show, but, and, and, pardon my ignorance on this. I, I thought buckets came as buckets and that they were, but you're actually welding these attachments on and the rhino wear is part of that lineup, right? Absolutely. We, we, we could be taking an OEM bucket coming in in a general purpose configuration and it needs to be more ready for rock or more rig, more ready for the digging application that it's headed into. And there, there's a variety of them um, and the rhino wear products uh, as a whole um, uh, are quite uh, quite con easy and, and, and convenient to just place on the bucket in the specific areas where we need them. And we can take a general purpose bucket and we can give it that heavy duty beef up, we call it, 
uh, in a short period of time and, and whip it back onto the machine and back into service, it will go. There's not too many buckets that leave our facility here that don't have a full complement of the RhinoWare products actually already installed. It's right. how we differ differentiate ourselves in the market. We are not GP people, all right? We're not general purpose, uh, general purpose shop. We specialize in heavy duty, severe duty, and extreme service duty applications. Um, in, in both for our RhinoWare and our rock applications and buckets and everything we do. Um, as Jamie said, being centered in the middle of some of the toughest rock on the planet, um, what, a, what, a, what a prime location to, to test and develop products that, that, uh, that industry can use and need. Well, the, yeah, and, and actually, oh, oh sorry, yeah. Jared. No, go if, ahead. If, if I could add, uh, because I'm in the field quite a bit, it is it is quite something. Uh, like Paul said, when you get an OEM bucket and uh, they, they this customer orders a brand new machine, you get a, a brand new bucket, and the customer turns to us and say, "Okay, we need this bucket with the uh, with the RhinoWare Touch," yeah. and um, you know, we bring it to the shop, a brand new bucket, dress it up. You know, it's uh, done up to a severe. Uh, duty uh application and uh it's very impressive and some of the oem reps when they see their buckets back wow man i wish we could do that you know <laughs> yeah no kidding and, and in some cases if, if i could it, it's gone to the point now that the successes of the systems that we're installing now are driving the, the market in a new direction whereas the customer is ordering a new machine, but they're ordering it without the bucket or no, specifying about that. Yeah. that they want a bucket shop built bucket. Yeah. So that's entering the, the the specs now of machines as they're being ordered on the OEMs. And we're happy to receive calls from those OEMs to, uh, um, you know, hang, uh, you know, X, Y, X, Y, Z bucket on there dressed to the customer's uh, specifications using the RhinoWare products. And uh, actually, again, Paul, if I oh. could, oh, I'm sorry, Jared, I keep stepping on you. No, that's but that's why there's multiple of us on, on the show. Let's go ahead. There's there's even one uh, OEM uh, member that we uh, build under license. And um, yeah, they've come to embrace our technology. So we designed their bucket from scratch mm. uh, and they go out the door to a severe duty uh, RhinoWare spec. And it's, it's, it's something we're very proud of. I was just going to ask, are the sizes, is it, is it the size that matches up the bucket or are there different grades um, that go on as well? It's actually a combination of both. Okay. Uh, we have the standard duty to, 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 to run parallel with industry. And then we've got the RhinoWare version, which is your heavy duty and extreme duty offerings. Yeah. And so we do offer both and they are offered right now in, in three sizes. We offer our heels in the 30 pound, the 40, the 85, and excuse me. We also offer the 150 pound for your open, uh, your open pit shovels and okay. things like that. And again, they are fully dressed with all of the right wear materials on the, uh, on the outside to give them that extended life cycle we've already touched on. So I was going to ask, so uh, going back to the distributor question then, so does a distributor have to have the capability to install those on the buckets then? Is that one of the criteria that you'd be looking for? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, the, okay. the dealer just needs to, to have a network where he can go and sell these products to the end user, might be to a contractor, could be to the mine, uh, to the mine themselves as the end user. They do okay. not necessarily need to be a welding shop. We happen to be unique in the fact that we... Uh, we are the dealer for the products and we install an awful lot of them. So as an install house, we're buying at that discounted uh, dealer rate. Right. All right and, and then able to put them, those wares into our products and offer them to industry. So it works very, a, very well. But not a require, but not a requirement for this. Not a requirement and whatsoever. I, I, just, I think it's an important thing. Um, uh, Tim, I want to jump over to you because you talked a little bit about the composition of the chrome white iron, but there's, I mean, we touched on it very briefly. There's a lot of, there's a lot more that we can break down. Again, I'm not going to sit here and try to be the expert and explain it before I set up the question. Um, can you can you sort of break down some of those buckets um, that we didn't cover already? For sure. Yeah, it, uh, the chrome white iron is a very versatile uh, product. Uh, we use it extensively in, in not only mobile applications, but fixed plants. Uh, so everything from liners, from apron feeders, which we've got the extensive experience uh, all kind of shoot liners, um, and again, mobile, you're talking about your skid bars underneath, uh, your protection on your suspension on the back end. I mean, very, very versatile product. And when it comes to fixed plant, uh, we've, we've got some good experience there. And, and, and what we always try to do for a customer is to design the shoots 
with commonality. So we've got a liner that call it MK1 that's used in maybe five different shoots. And we're trying to reduce the, the customer's inventory that they have to do. So we always keep oh. that in mind and, and try to get, you know, we're trying to uh, save the customer money by reducing their inventory. So, but how, so can you, can you unpack that a little bit of how you would do that? Um, are you, you're always looking at the composition and seeing if you can sort of, it, it can work along a, a wider range or sort of how do you approach it or how do you even audit that to, to see how you can make those choices on uh, sort of on the customer's behalf in a way, I guess. Sure. Sure. Well, a lot of the uh, installations are, are um, not new installations. They were previously either AR plate or chromium carbide, whatever. And the customer sees that there's a wear zone and impact zone. So with that, we have the knowledge that we have to pick the right product. Uh, Chrome white iron is not the right product for every application, neither is AR. So it's a combination of two or more solutions. And it's, it's, we have to know where to use what, and, and that's what we specialize in. Could you give a couple of examples of where one, um, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but a couple of examples of where it would be a good application and not just so sort of we sure. have context. Sure. Well, chrome white iron is, is good for medium impact and high abrasion. So you wouldn't want to put chrome white iron in the center of a truck box, like Jamie mentioned earlier, where you're dropping a hundred ton boulder. Mm. You know, that AR plate would probably be the best application for that. Uh, but uh, medium impact and, and that can... In, in so, it's it's all relative. Medium impact can still be pretty severe in some people's uh, uh, opinions. Uh, but uh, a, a chrome white iron liner, you know, you can drop a, uh, say, a 10 inch boulder from 10 feet coming off a chute and, you know, it, it can stand up to that. Right. Happens to be one application that we had uh, north of us here, north of Cochrane. A uh, customer had a tripper chute. And uh, this was one of our first uh, appearances at site and they were getting 10 days out of three inch 500. We installed two inch chrome white iron and we went oh, 10 wow. weeks. All right. Yep. Wow. Significant difference. All right. With an inch less in thickness of material. So those are the kind of results that we've seen. And that was the door opener for us. That was the tough sell yeah. that I had mentioned was getting in the door. When we went from 10 days to 10 weeks, the whole mill converted to these products in a very short period of time. Right. And they and they use those products today exclusively. Now there is still areas like Tim says, where AR is the best plate. Um, and uh, the chrome white iron and chromium carbide overlay are not the solution for everything. One application where, where CCO and chrome white iron are, uh, don't work so well is in a slurry type application. We know that through experience, trial and error. That happens to be an area where we'd suggest that it not be put, stick with your AR plates. But wherever we have moderate impact and high abrasion, sliding abrasion, dovetails, uh, continuous flow of material over a surface, nothing touches it. It's the best out there. Right. And it, like, like on this... Um... Like on this bucket I'm seeing here, and there's sort of these round, um, there's sort of like like almost like round plates on the bottom of the bucket. Is that is that silver looking thing? Is that the chrome white iron itself? Yes, it is. Yeah, right. I'm familiar with the picture, Tim. I didn't mean to steal your thunder here, but oh, I'm familiar no with the, the the system. And yes, it is those pucks that are offering us the increase in life cycle, and that is what RhinoWare has built their name around. Is exactly what you're referring to right there. I can't believe as a Canadian host, I didn't call them pucks and I called them plates. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for throwing me under the bus, Paul. Ah, it's um, all good. <laughs> um, um, okay, so Paul, we're going to stick with you. Um, I want to unpack the CCO a little bit more because uh, that's obviously another, another focal point. We've touched on it a lot. We've got lots of pictures here, you know, lining truck beds and that. So can you sort of break that down as a product line as well? Sure. Uh, CCO has been around for a long time. It's not new to the industry. There's multiple, uh, multiple manufacturers of the product today. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time, again, trying to find that happy medium. Uh, we have three grades of CCO that we offer industry. We've got the heavy duty, um, severe duty, and the extreme service duty. Uh, with Rockwell hardness in the C-scale ranging from 55 to 65. So there are, again, it is very application specific. It's important that we understand the nature of the application to be sure that we're picking the right grade out of the three grades that we offer. 
It's got great weldability, great formability. That's been a big thing for us as a fab shop here. It's so important to us that um, the formability of that material is, is, is unique. And far too often, industry finds uh, themselves putting the, these products into a brake press to form them to curve, you know, to form a shape. And we have spalling. And spalling is uh, something that happens when the, um, the chromium carbide overlay separates from the mild steel uh, backer. And anybody that's used the product in the past knows full well what spalling is. It can happen both in the forming and fabrication process. It can also happen in the field if it's misapplied. And so uh, again, that's why it's so important that we understand the application. But again, in our recipe, when we get into the metallurgy, the hardness, it's that happy medium and that compromise. But uh, working with uh, you know our techs, we we found the what we think is the ultimate recipe and solution that it, uh, is offering extended life cycles uh, while at the same time um, uh, not compromising formability, weldability, and being able to remain competitive in a very competitive marketplace. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask, so those sort of those three levels, um, could you just quickly run through examples of where each one would be applicable, the best fit? Well, I mean, if you've got your standard, uh, your standard duty, uh, if you will, your heavy duty, which is it, which is our bottom end, which would be our entry level is our heavy duty person might find that material onto a dozer blade. You know, something with just a lot of rolling wear uh, on a semi U blade of a D10 or a D11, for example. Another application might be in the bed of a uh, of a dump truck box, for example. Where we get into the extra heavy duty and and the harder products will be where there is less impact and more sliding abrasion. Uh, if there's going to be high impact. We got to soften it up a little bit so it doesn't spall and grenade in situ. All right. So again, it's that it's that happy medium. Um, where we end up in the dovetail of a large 795 truck box, for example, it's important that we understand the loading characteristics of that truck to be sure that once again, that we're using the right material for the application. So generally, we don't have to see all these applications. We over the phone, you know, a few pictures, we can generally direct the customer right. or the dealer in the right direction. Uh, secondly, uh, with, with, uh, with chromium carbide overlay, uh, multiple methods of attaching. Uh, three in particular, uh, we can weld it into place using perimeter or a stitch weld, no problem at all. We can also burn holes in it and, and weld in an insert with an 82 degree countersink for bolt-in applications. Mm. And lastly, we can stud weld to the back of the uh, mild steel portion of the CCO um, and put studs on. So that allows us to uh, create liner package packages that will fit an existing bolt pattern that a customer is already using. I see. Right. So we'll tailor these these liner solutions to suit the bolt patterns that are already in situ uh, versus the customer having to do what might be, a, you know, complete tear out new bolt patterns. And there's there's time enough for that when the shoot is finished. But if the shoot has still got some good life cycle in it, then we're able to tailor these these liner programs to suit. Very important. Yeah, thank you. And I, I want to talk. Uh, I'll just kind of throw this out there for whoever. I know there's the wear compounds as well. Um, can can. Would, would one of you three be able to break down sort of what that is as a product line and then sort of their applications sort of just outline that for us as well? Absolutely. And that's definitely one for Jamie. We're excited to talk about the most uh, recent addition to our product line. And Jamie, if you would, please. Well, certainly. And, uh, you know, arguably it's not as sexy as a big piece of steel. It's, it's <laughs> a, uh, if, you, if you think about the purpose of compounds. It's not sexy. Drive. It can't be on the show, James. <laughs> oh, it's all about okay. I, I gotta, well, let's make it sexy. Then. I'll but, leave now. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. The, uh, you know, generally speaking, so much like people would understand that a compound for drywall is meant to fill cracks and, and do temporary repairs, compounds are, are required in, in the sector that we serve as well. So these compounds are a few liquid base, so they're applied with a trowel and they set up in, in cracks of steel backed uh, environments, whether that's a piping environment, uh, could be in, in large chutes, et cetera. So we use these types of compounds and really the, the, the variance between them, there's a standard compound that we would apply and sets up in two to three hours before you can start using it. Certain environments need to be faster, faster requirements. So we have a fast dry compound that can set up in 30 minutes. Uh, then there's uh, some with smaller beads to get into smaller cracks. We have a ceramic based version for particularly hard environments. And finally, it's very common in the mining sector to have backing for crusher, crusher areas. So 
Uh, that's sort of the broad range of the most popular um, offerings of compounds that we now work with RhinoWare to develop those chemical compositions. And uh, we've had tremendously successful applications. There are some big name brands in the marketplace that we've specifically gone after. They've owned the market in our territory. We even resold them at certain points in time. Mm. But we now know what the pricing model is to uh, perform well. We know what the, the performance characteristics are to be, perform well. And uh, again, like our other products, we bought both of them together, work with the Foundry Direct to manage that chemical composition. And uh, proud to say we're making immediate and direct inroads with the success. Uh, Tim, I just wanted to throw this over to you, um, this, this wear compound section as well, because I know you're, you're, you've got a lot of expertise on, on expertise and sort of that technical side of it. Can you sort of break down the, the product and application a little bit more for us? Sure, Jared. Uh, well, what's unique with ours? Well, there's a few things that make us unique, but one of them is our, our uh, Kevlar reinforcement. Well, Kevlar is a very popular, popular product nowadays. Uh, we use that to reinforce our matrix. Another thing is that a lot of uh, people that make this kind of product use strictly spherical beads. Uh, we use spherical and irregular. Now, if you think of that, uh, if you think of a, of, of a ball that is encased in, 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 a, uh, in a matrix, once you wear down to less than half of that ball, it basically just pops out. There's nothing holding it in there. So with the irregular ceramics in there, there's more contact area and they hold a lot better. Mm. If I could too, and it's the glue that keeps everything glued together. So while we have the spherical and the irregulars, which we call the, uh, you know, the triangular uh, shape products, I mean, it all just keeps it, you know, glued together better. If you lose your matrix and what's keeping everything glued together, then your expensive part of your product, which is your ceramics, um, just basically has nothing holding it in place. And now you're just using the, the glue uh, as your wear compound. So it's very important that that matrix be put together right using spherical and irregular shapes um, to, to keep it glued together. And Tim, did you have some uh, specific applications that might work? Well, for sure. Uh, they're great for long-term service, but uh, really great also for um, unscheduled uh, breakdowns where you can't, you don't have time to drag a welder up to the sixth floor or whatever. This you can send a guy up there with a pail and mix it and and get this this uh, you know compound in a pipe or on a, on, a, on a, where a liner should be, a small area, large area. Get it done quick. Get back to service. Get the plant running up again. And the, the unique thing with our three compounds is they're all the matrix behind them is all basically the same chemical composition. Yeah. So we're able to take, if you needed a thick layer, but you don't have time for it to dry, you can put a thick layer of our, our CK, and then you can put a thin layer of our fast dry over that to get the plant up and running in an hour. Uh, and, and it'll actually cure in service, uh, the bottom layer. So that's unique. And I keep going back to safety. Uh, safety is, is something uh, as an on-site kind of guy I see all the time. Um, our product contains no isocyanates. So a lot of times these products are used in confined spaces. So people have to go on the, in there under air or with respirators at, at a minimum. Uh, so with us, there's a lot less PPE and, and a lot the safety is improved. And it, it goes without saying, this is all part of uh, your dealer network you're going to be building. Um, this would be included in that sort of suite of product lines, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Not to mention the crusher backing. Um, somebody wants to pick that up. You know, the one of the newest compounds to be added to our offering. Sure thing. Generally speaking, there, there's four versions to pick from. There's our standard offering that has a standardized dry time of roughly three hours. We have a fast cure version that can set up in roughly 30 minutes. We have a ceramic based version. And by the way, all of these are, are Kevlar integrated as well. So the same, same chemical composition, uh, ceramic coating on the third one. And our fourth and newest one in the market is a crusher backing compound that you'll see, uh, say, in crusher environments. And it, it's a really a glue or adhesion that goes on the back of these liners to uh, increase the stability of those as well. So all four elements, all part of the RhinoWare suite and available in multiple sizes from small pails in you know, uh, you know, less than a gallon, all the way up to the potential for the crusher backing can come in a 45 gallon drum as well. So multiple sizes, multiple options, and uh, broadly serving the whole market. 
It's um, I wanted to, you, you know, thanks for kind of running through the, um, all of that. I want to just quickly ask you a question, Paul, and, and I know that, you know, all of you are going to be involved at certain levels and, and Jamie, a lot of the work that you're doing um, is, is sort of preparing to be able to go like hit all these different stages of a company. Um, you know, now you'll be, you'll be providing dealer support. You'll be selling directly to your customers. Um, you know, the supply, your, your manufacturer, like a vinyl wear. Um, if you, do you do a lot is there must be a lot of background work to sort of prepare as a company. I, I just, someone listening to this is going to be hearing that sort of growth and that expansion, taking on new product lines how much of it is is also in the background planning to be able to sort of handle the workload that comes with this sort of scaling up? Well, it is a massive undertaking. When we first entered into the going global campaign, Jamie, how many years we've been at it now? I mean, it's at least five or six at minimum. Yeah. That was even before the RhinoWare line where we wanted to take our bucket shop solutions to the world platform. Uh, it's a massive undertaking. Uh, there, there's no question. And uh, it, it sounds simple to just go open up a dealer network and find people who are like you and the represent your stuff and, and, and just, you know, kind of make it happen. And it's anything, but frankly, yeah. uh, there's been a whole ton of legwork um, finding the right dealer. That is the, like there's dealers out there and there's dealers out there that have a line card that are chock full with too many things. Frankly, we're looking for a dealer that doesn't have a very full line card that is tied to industry that knows a little bit about what we're doing. And yes, we're here to provide all of the support mechanisms and no dealer can be successful without the, you know, the support of, of, of foundry and, 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 uh, uh, and, and the support that we would provide as the, the master dealer, if you will. You know, so th- there's a lot of effort that goes into it. The creation of literature in both, you know, French, yeah. English, Spanish, yeah. uh, same thing with the RhinoWare catalog. We're looking to create these connections with industry and get that toehold through the dealer network or through the end user. End users can call us directly as well. And the unique thing about us, and that's one thing when dealing with trying to establish a dealer network, one of the biggest concerns amongst potential dealers is what happens when my customer calls you direct. All right. Yep. Yep. Totally get it. Um, and there are safeguards in place throughout the organization to ensure that those things don't happen. Yeah. We have representation now on the, uh, the eastern side, uh, sorry, western side of Quebec. And we're getting calls from some of their clients on a direct basis. First order of business when that happens is the dealer is notified that we've received and fielded a call from their client within yeah. their territory. Yeah. Months to find a dealer and seconds to lose one. So we can appreciate the importance of uh, you know bringing, again, these family values that we have here in the workplace, because as a family business and as a family member, I insist that we bring those values to our business. Right. So um, it's very important that we give it our all and uh, put our best foot forward and make sure that we have both our customer and our dealer's best interest in mind at all times. And it's been a re- recipe that's worked for, you know, since 1994, when I uh, first graduated high school, I've never left. And, and we continue to bring new, innovative, long-term uh, ideas to industry to try and separate ourselves from, uh, you know, the me too's. And it's something we talk about here quite regularly. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I was, I had actually, you were a sponsor for on the show. Um, Jerry Asp was on the show. I don't know if you got a chance to watch it. It was a, a really, I think it was an important interview and a fun interview for me to do. And um, he was talking about his, uh, the Tel 10 nation. They were, and so he, when he tells a story, it's kind of like we, um, we did this and this, and then we partnered with the mine. And so I said, sort of, and then about his personal career, I said, so how long did that sort of take to sort of um, before you were able to, you know, he made some major changes in his life, personal changes. And I said, so how long did that take? He said, well, 10 years, um, 10. <laughs> I haven't been in the industry hardly 10 years. Yeah. And, and it's, it takes, and the reason I asked these questions on the show, because I know there are people that are trying to grow their businesses on the show. And just, I always try to give context so that mentally they're prepared for how long it actually takes to put these into place. Cause you, you, you're, we're seeing an end result of Rhino wear and the bucket shop. You're now ready to take it out to the public and come on a show like ours that we haven't been following you the last 10 years that you've been putting all these parts and pieces together. And, and I, right. so I, I always want to try to highlight that on these well, shows. Thank you for, 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 for uh, noticing and mentioning. And I did watch that interview by the way, and it was a great interview, very informative. He did a great job. I took a lot of information from that. Some things that actually, well, I'm going to encourage Jamie to catch the episode as well, if he hasn't already. 
Um, but uh, yeah, there's nothing short term about any of it. And you've got to be, uh, you've got to be ready to weather the storm, stay the course. Um, there's lot, there's lots of ups and downs. And I think more challenges than there are kind of rewarding experiences as you go through this process. Um, no one person could ever do it single handedly. And if it wasn't for Jamie, Tim, Curtis, and my team, and everybody that I'm surrounded by here with, uh, it would frankly would have never have happened too yeah. large an undertaking. Uh, today with uh, what we're seeing with uh, shipment delays with what's going on in the world. Um, you know, uh, that, that's, that's made uh, doing business even more difficult. We've had to forecast yeah. uh, uh, more of our, uh, our lead times and we're ordering now for five and six months in advance, understanding that there's major hiccups at the major ports. And so we've yeah. had to change our whole business model because, you know, if you want to, you want to sell it, you got to have it. And if you're going to have a dealer network, you better be ready to have the inventory on the ground. And today we've got better than about three and a half million dollars worth of inventory on the ground in both Rhino wear and wow. plate products. That's a significant investment for a family business, you know? Yeah. So the dealer networks be, need to be able to count on us to have, uh, uh, you know, those inventories on hand for when they need them. I'm, you know what, and I, I didn't think to ask about that supply chain, uh, and I'm glad you brought that up because for anybody listening, that is a huge, huge value add that you've, you're even in these in this environment, you are are planning for that and preparing that support, right? Because that's going to make all the difference. Right. I mean, a, every it's everything. And a now, little factoid for those that might be interested in shipping: uh, when it used to cost us four thousand dollars to move a sea can uh, from China, let's say. Uh, as an example, all right, one of many ports that we use, uh, that, that same sea can at uh, 20 tons, 40,000 pounds, it used to be 4,000, it's now better than $12,000 to move that same sea can with that same volume and that same weight. It's crazy what's happened. And, it, and, it's, and it's caused industry as a whole, all of us have been affected in so, so many ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, you know, I'm a, I cycle a bit. I'm not a cyclist, but I, to, to, to be in shape, basically, is what it's for. Um, and you cover a lot of ground. So um, just on the retail end, I go into uh, the bike shop that I buy from. It's basically a parts shop now. Yeah. There, there is no bikes. <laughs> they, That's right. they have maybe 20 bikes. And they used to have two floors full of them. There's none there. None there. So it's no, it's it's great to see that. Um, Jamie, I'm going to throw the last over because I have got a product list here, and and uh, we got I want to get every single one in. So I'm going to throw the last product over to you. Um, the the lifting lugs. Um, again, I don't know if you'd consider them sexy, but it, it's a, a major part of the industry. So let's uh, highlight that before we wrap it up. It is. Well, I, I'm going to try and make a deal here. What if if Tim speaks the lifting lugs? Okay. I can wrap up with sort of the uh, the evolution model, if that's an okay to do it, because Tim's been in this for 20 plus years. So if that works okay, we'll let Tim talk about lifting lugs, and then I can talk about corporate uh, evolution. Sounds good to me. Tim, over okay. to you. Jamie, you're aging me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for sure, uh, uh, when it comes to lifting lugs, like everything nowadays, Jared, a lot of purchasing and, and maintenance decisions are based on safety. Uh, in the old days, as a welder and a millwright by trade, we used to take a washer out of the bin and weld that onto a liner or a chute, and, and that was our lifting device. Well, those days are gone. So we, we've solved that problem uh, with our full line of engineered uh, lifting lugs, everything from uh, 1,000 pound to 30,000 pound, and, and we can even go higher with, uh, with our, a different engineering if, if needed. But we, we've solved that problem. We, we, we sell a lot of these uh, engineered uh, lifting devices, and um, it's just another safety solution that we've brought to market. You know, I used to lift a lot of stuff, you know, used equipment business, and I every time that I lift that stuff, I thought, that doesn't look right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're solving that problem for. Uh, and if I could just jump in to expand on that slightly, just so the audience knows that these things are on the shelf, they're inventoried. Um, there's a stamp print that goes with them. There is a certified welding procedure that accompanies the D ring as well. So there's no question that's a thousand pound D ring. Here's the welding uh, requirements. And so long as your piece doesn't weigh any more than a thousand, this welding procedure and this lifting lug is engineered to ensure um, the, the, the worker safety and protect the mine's interest as well. So it, it's been a great solution for us. We create a lot of drops within the cutting operations of our, of our facility. Everything is 44W. We have mill certs on it all as well. It's just a great way to use up drops and bring a safety solution to market right. at the same time, you know? 
Yeah. Um, actually, I was going to ask Tim because you're out, out, out in the field a lot. Um, with these with these solutions that you're providing, is the industry up to date or um, not? Not the industry. Uh, the, the customers that you're talking to, are they? Do they need a lot of like 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 uh, like Paul said earlier? It's like getting that first one. You know, once you get they they see it and they use it. Um, or are, are people getting pretty up to date now when you when you come onto site and, and showing through your options and like the advantages and everything like that? Um, or is there still a lot of, okay, we'll try it in this one area here and see how it works? Or is that still a, a big part of the process for you? Not so much anymore, Jared. Now with, with, with this safety being, you know, top priority to, to almost everybody. I, so there's some operations that, uh, smaller operations, I say, that might be a little behind the curve, but it's, uh, it's pretty well recognized that, you know, any in lifting device needs to be engineered and it, it's pretty well accepted. And, and thankfully, we, our pricing is, is very competitive. Uh, like Paul said, we have them in stock, so they're available right away as a solution. If, if something comes up during a breakdown or, or shut down, the, the customers know that we have them. And uh, yeah, it's been very recept uh, receptive to that. If I could just very quickly, and I know you're going to want to switch to Jamie here very quickly, Jared, uh, but your, your majors in the industry, you know, and I think it's safe to say, you know, your De Beers, your, uh, you know, the Gold Corps of the world, Newmont, um, yeah. any of the majors out there, safety is priority number one. And yeah. what we're looking to do is just provide solutions to help them be a safer company as well. And, and it's worked very well. When you talk about the applications and where do we go looking? When we start talking about RhinoWare and we're talking about chromium carbide and CCO, we generally hone in and we talk to the customer. It's like, we'd like to understand where's your biggest problem right, right. now today. Yeah. All right. Let's focus on what that problem is. Take us into that high wear uh, application and let's see if we can't put some products in there that are going to provide, you know, fairly immediate results, measurable results. So you can continue then to understand how that product is performing. And then maybe there's other applications where we can take it to, to, to improve life cycle and total and reduce total cost of ownership. Right. So uh, worst applications are generally best. <laughs> yeah, it would be, uh, you know, I'm like those audits and that, I mean, obviously that's internal stuff. That'd be very interesting to see that sort of that whole process that you do improving the improving the customer experience, improving the safety, product um, evolution, all that sort of thing that you're doing. I mean, you, we obviously don't have time to break down all those things on the show, but it's a very interesting um, approach and, and sort of balance that you're always trying to find as a company. I, I really enjoy it, that kind of thing. So, Thank you. Um, Jamie, I'm going to toss it over to you to, to wrap things up, uh, sort of sort of bring it home for a for the company. You know, there's a, been a lot going on, the evolution of, of, of the bucket shop and and what you've done as a company. You know, Paul touched on it dealing with, I mean, we're, we're 18 months into now so just sort of a, a major global disruption. Can you sort of tie it all together, uh, you know, as a company right now? Uh, certainly. Thank, thank you for that. So I'll play this back to one of the questions you'd asked and the example you used about one of your previous guests on the realistic timing that it takes to evolve. Uh, and, and it's in the years. We look at our company been in existence for roughly 30 years. We spent the first 25 years growing as a fantastic fabrication company and a supplier to the mining sector. And that distribution channel worked for us and we had credibility. Now, the last five years, that distribution channel has broadened to now have OEMs behind us and then multiple clients ahead of us. So we've gone from a supplier to a much larger ecosystem partner. Yeah. And to be able to achieve that, we required partnerships. We required endorsement of major vendors and suppliers behind us. And we had to prove that we could bring value to the table beyond a competitive price tag. And we've given multiple examples, say, for instance, where Tim would be on site auditing the results and we would contribute, uh, you know, three year forecasts for expense models so successfully that that got turned into uh, an RFP, which we consequently won to provide three years of service to a major mine site in our territory, strictly by the fact that we're willing to to audit and produce uh, results to show yeah. that we're bringing value to the table. So. The whole notion of our own evolution really mimics what you had already said with your previous guest that it does take time and, and it's a sometimes a fairly slow upward growth 
and there'll yeah. be bumps in the roads up and down. But uh, when you manage the volatility, if you're still on an upward cycle, um, the results are fantastic. And we've proven that we've made it through that threshold to become a true ecosystem partner. And uh, the major mines, which have global representation, have started to come for us for industry expertise. So we know we made it. Yeah, no, it, it's fantastic. And it's, 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 I mean, I just, I love having companies like yours on the show. It's, it's, we have, a, and I said this on the last show, we have a lot of great American guests from, and, and guests now from coming from all over the world. But of course, but of course, being in, being in Canada, when I get to feature a company like yours, it's sort of servicing that global market, starting as a family business and then growing. I mean, it, it's the world I come from. So I just, I just love it. So thank you. Uh, thanks for, you know, you're also a sponsor on the show. Thank you for sponsoring us and helping our little company keep things moving and keep doing these shows. We really appreciate it and, and hope you come back soon. Jamie, how does a customer go ahead or a potential dealer go, uh, go about getting their hands on a catalog? Could you please walk them through that? Yeah, please contact us through each each of our websites, either the bucketshop.ca or rhinowareproducts.ca, and we'll get catalogs distributed, and then we can connect you with experts like Tim to talk through the details. So just start with the website, and, and we'll find each other. Yeah, and we'll make sure on the, uh, yeah, and we'll put links and everything in the, in the website, the contact link, so they can do it in one click. And we'll also have, uh, I mean, if you're watching the end, you've already seen them. We'll have banners popping up of contact information for potential dealers as well. Um, thank you, gentlemen. And uh, hope we'll see you back on the Crownsman Show again. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Jared. Thanks thank you, Jared. Again. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, again, we'll put that information for the Bucket Shop and Rhino Wear. Um, and, and please follow us. Keep supporting us. Keep suggesting guests. We really appreciate all the support. We have people from, I mean, all over Canada, but even now um, we, we have uh, someone in Italy that's trying to book us guests. We've got uh, someone out of California that's brought us in multiple guests on the show. Just absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Please keep watching, subscribing, uh, commenting, telling us how we can make the show be better. We will see you on the next episode of The Crownsman Show.